All right. Hello, my name is Deputy Curtis Hall, H-A-L-L. -L. Um, I've invited you guys today. To, we're going to give you guys a little demonstration of the active shooter training that's occurring at the uh, Grace Brethren or Ashton Christian School today. Uh, it's the largest training, um, our largest uh, combined training that we've ever conducted in National County. We'll have nearly 140 people in the building today. Um, what we're trying to do is have a combined effort of training in our community, and this is the start of that. So some of the agencies that are involved have been involved the whole time for the planning processes. Ashland County Sheriff's Office, Ashland City Police, Ashland City Fire Division, uh, EMA, Coroner's Office, OSP, and uh, Limeville Police Department. Am I forgetting that? They have, they are here today, so ODNR. Um, also, I got to thank some uh, university hospitals, right? University, mm -hmm. they are a big part of what's happening today. You, I know these, it's hard to see them because they're not standing here in front of you, but they have been a partner and they have really helped us with the equipment that we're using, the people that we're using, and even the food that we're having today. So I have to thank university hospitals. What I want to say to you guys is law enforcement and firefighters will have a tough job if this event were ever to occur. We're expecting them to do a lot of things. Under the, uh, there'll be a lot of confusion, there'll be a lot of tough jobs, there'll be a lot of things laying on the floor that's pretty traumatic. We're going to introduce them to all that today. And it's going to be in a controlled environment, as controlled as we can make it. Um, this, this environment will be real. It will feel very real. Um, I think in a minute we're going to, cut, uh, we're going to cut off an intruder alarm, and then we're going to have some victims out. Uh, hey, Wes, can you give me some victim set? Some victims, can you go 310 and have some victims set for me? There's, uh, we'll be also testing the dispatch centers and how they function and dispatch the different agencies to respond and working together. In that aspect, uh, we'll be testing our rescue task force teams, our direct to threat response by law enforcement. So there's multiple objectives that we'll be testing today to make sure that uh, we're adequately trained to do our jobs. So in a few minutes, what we're going to do is we're going to walk you through. We're going to give you a couple uh, little bits of uh, what the cops are going to see and the firefighters are going to see. Um, we're going to show you some equipment that's going to get fired off. Uh, in modern training, we have made it uh, sleeker, easier to do with some of the equipment that we have, like the shot box um, and the, the moulage situation you guys are going to see. The victims are going to look like victims. So it's important that we give them real life experience as they move through here. Does anybody have any questions for me so far? Yeah. <coughs> How did this training get started? We, the process of two, we have, we're in the process of two years now. We started, the sheriff came to me two years ago and told me to start an active shooter uh, training um, and he wants it to be annual. So we've, in time, we've all started working together with the rescue task force and then it came to this. We were gonna move forward with this team too. Uh, we're going to do stuff in the future, but it came, the sheriff actually started after Uvalde, we saw a real need, and we also start to see the trend move to communities like ours, the trend of after shooters move to communities like ours. All right, guys, so the training environment that we have to set up has got to be real, realistic, right? Ups and downs of these environments, there's going to be a lot of ups and there's going to be some downs when these guys come through this, but it's got to be as real as we can make it. We're showing them what they're going to see and feel, right? Smell, in some cases. This is a tough thing, but when I say it's got to be real, what I mean is, Adam, it's got to be real. Go ahead. We're using technology to make this environment as real as we can. That's good. We're using, the environment, we're using technology and role players to make this environment as, as real as we can. As we go in there, you're going to see how these mostly end. They're loud and violent. And, but it's got to, it's got to end so we can save lives. And we're going to train that today. So follow me. <laughs> Officers are going to be faced with an environment that's very difficult to deal with. There's going to be a lot of people in this rooms and screaming. You guys can come and film a room as we come past it. Come, come back out this way, guys.
Come back out this way. As we move through these environments and clear these rooms, we'll get faced with more destruction. You can walk in here. Follow me, guys. Follow me. Come on past, Joe. Give him a chance. So in the end, how this comes to, it's actually when the work really starts after this part. But in the end, the officers will be faced with a confrontation. And the confrontation will look something like this. Mark. <laughs> <laughs> we'll work on that. We'll work on that, guys. Um, but there'll be a guy running at them shooting. He obviously doesn't have an airsoft gun right now, but he will have an airsoft gun. Okay? Anybody have any questions about what this event? Give you some numbers, 100, uh, around 140 people, 128 mills, uh, 100 and some 148 waters, 12 or 13 different agencies. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's massive, and we really appreciate everybody uh, been a part of it, supporting it, Mayor. We, you know, allowing us to do stuff like this in your community. Um, Fire Chief Anderson for being a part, uh, Chief Lay, um, Sheriff. Uh, uh, Eway Riser, all these people, and the hospital for allowing us to do this and allowing us to be better. We, but we really want to encourage training on type on this type of level all across the community, within schools, within churches, within hospitals. We need this type of training. So thank you guys. You have any questions for me? We'll get you guys out of here. One quick one. All I've, the fire departments in the county. Are here? I think most no, of majority of them, but not all of them. Okay. You're choosing this facility best represents a. Uh, large population, floor Our, space. I can't say exactly why we chose it, but I would say one of the factors was the size and another factor is the location. Yeah. And we're very thankful that they allowed us to have the f entire facility to, to do this in. Um, we haven't always had the full access of some buildings when we've done these type of trainings. So this is very important for us and we're very thankful that Grace Church has allowed us to do this. When was the last time a large scale training like this occurred? Uh, we've done some large scale, but not as this is the biggest we've done. We've done some others at the county schools and uh, Ashland City Schools. Um, but for the most part, we, those remain secret, right? Yeah. You guys don't know about them. Um, but we've this is a two-year training cycle to get to this point. So we started a couple years ago after Evolve. It said in the thing there that you're going to be shutting down the road at times. Is, so is the is this going to be the roads are not going to be shut down. Okay. No, they're just the driveways to the church are just blocked off. In a real scenario, there would be, but today for training, we will not. How many volunteers do you have for these demonstrations? Uh, there is close to 40. Yeah, 40 volunteer firefighters here today. Are volunteer role players or? Role players. And oh, role players, the victims are 40, and then we have approximately 40 uh, firefighter uh, volunteers that are from the county here. Any other questions? Thank you guys. Follow me. We're going to let you guys.